Hello, people of the future. My name is Ben, and I was born into a world you may not understand. It's a very important message I have for you today. It's very important you listen before you watch the rest of this video. There is a previous section to this video that I ask you to watch, and I'll be able to tell if you watch it or not because your comments will give it away whether or not you've watched it. I'll be able to tell. However, I say this for a far more important reason. I'm going to be painting a gun today that I swore I would never paint because it is a gun that is different from all my others. It is a 300 blackout and I wanted to keep it painted a certain way, i.e. not, so that it was different from all my other guns. However, I've received so many requests to do a painting tutorial, I have to give the internet what they want. We are about to come upon the Brace Man, and this is a Brace Pistol. This is being filmed on 5-16-2023. It will be released shortly thereafter filming. It will be released before the end of the month and before the pistol brand ban takes place. By the time the pistol brand ban is in effect, I will have done one of the compliance options that has been given by the ATF for this pistol brace. However, if you're questioning why I am not simply putting a stock on here just to paint the stock with the gun, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, because that would be illegal current as of the time the video is filmed. So, I can't future-proof this. I have to go along with the laws that are available at the time of filming this video. So, I will literally be painting a brace that by probably like two weeks after the video has been released, that brace will no longer be on the gun or the gun will be registered as an SBR or it will be destroyed or it will be removed or yada yada yada. So just bear that in mind when you watch this video. Um, I know that in the comment section um, no one will watch this part and it will be full of oh, absolute mad lad, uh, oh guys got balls of steel, I can't believe he's on here, you know, posting this thing about his brace pistol, who's opening his mail now. Please understand that everything is time and date stamped. Um, this video, when it's recorded, will be time and date stamped. This video, when it's uploaded to YouTube, will be time and date stamped. Um, and I've got a very good lawyer. So that is kind of where this is going. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push this content out, obviously ahead of the brace band, should it actually come to pass, which it looks like it will. Um, and then once the brace band has passed, if it does, I can go ahead and remove this if I SBR it or however I, I play that situation um, and then paint a stock and put it on there if that's the way that I go. If I go the SBR out. Um, or you just rip the damn thing off and run on the buffer tube. It doesn't matter. So, without further ado, let's get into the painting. So, the first thing we're going to do is prep the functions on this gun. If you saw my previous video on this, which you have to go back and watch it if you've not, uh, we're going to do a very, very minimal taping job on this. What do I mean by that? We're not going to tape the sights. We're not going to tape the muzzle. We are not going to tape the ejection port. And at some points, we're going to spray paint it closed. And then we're going to spray paint it open. We are going to get paint on the bolt carrier group. That is A-OK. -okay. Why is it A-OK? -okay? Because 50,000 PSI is going to move this bolt carrier group and create, scrape off all the paint that doesn't need to be there if it's rubbing up against the receiver far more thoroughly than any other tool could. However, if it's not making contact with the receiver, then it doesn't matter if there's paint there. It's not touching anything. It's not touching you. It's not touching you. Uh, if it's any other fire selector, we might go over it once in one position. We may not go over it again in a second position. It doesn't matter. We will run the buffer tube all the way out. This is a tan Cerakoted buffer tube, actually. Um, we will not take the stock or brace off as far as it goes. We don't need to paint underneath it. We don't need to do anything crazy like that. Uh, we will take off the strap uh, simply because we don't need to mess up the cloth. We have a Strike Industries booty band up front. And we will remove that so that we don't mess up the cloth on that. 
I see a lot of guys just go goo goo gaga over here for the pressure switches. As you can see that we have a nice little pressure switch for the old primary arms weapon light. We will not be removing that. So we will be painting the rubber of the pressure switch. Get over it, get used to it. Uh, sights, again, those are getting painted. Uh, if it gets done and you're like, oh my God, it's, it's, it's camouflaged, I, I can't see. Take your, your little fingernail, your lead press on or whatever you got there, go ahead and scrape off the paint. Other than that, you can take your purse, whack your gun with it a few times, I'm sure all that paint will come right off. The only thing we're really concerning ourselves with is putting some paint on top of the optics lenses. We are not going to concern ourselves with uh, covering up the magwell. That's for chumps. I did that in my first uh, painting excursion, and I don't do it anymore. We are not going to put a magazine in here to keep the magwell secured. That's also for chumps. It's going to be open. It's going to be mad. Same thing with the trigger. We are not going to put... <laughs> painter's tape on the trigger there. Uh, we're not going to cover up that hole around the trigger pack. Um, we're just going to free ball it and, and it'll be totally fine. So again, the whole point of doing this is to not give a shit. If you give a shit, this will turn out terrible. This is a one take coat job and it is supposed to look that way. Um, we're not using any sort of chemical preparation agents. There's no strippers yet. The night's still pretty young. Um, there's no pre preparation agents or age. Um, there's no primer because the whole goal of this thing is to get the kind of wear that will get you questioned on an internet forum. People will ask, oh bro, did you really operate? Oh, did you sit there with steel wool for 17 hours and really do that? No, you're gonna get the kind of wear that if you dry fire practice, you know, three or four times a week, let alone however many times you get to the range, like you'll have wear right here where your finger stands by. You'll have wear where you grip. It's crazy. You'll have wear on your stock or your brace, where your face sits. It's bonkers how that works. Anywhere that you wear on the gun, you'll wear the paint off. And then you'll say, damn it, it's not the paint, it is the wear. And it'll, it will look like a gun that you that you use because it will be a gun that you use. Um, you know, if you want a gun that looks like you've thrown it down the stairs a few times or dragged it behind the fun feed for a while, like, it will look official. Because it is official. It's nothing that you sat there and like, oh god, I got my toothbrush out, I'm gonna make this thing look legit. It's gonna be baller. But you have to not give a shit. If you're sitting there trying to obsess about details and tiger stripes and lines and stencils, just turn this fucking video off. I don't want you to watch it, and you don't either. So, I'm gonna go tape up. And I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty then. So we went ahead and got this all taped up. And by that I mean two pieces of tape. Uh, the optic, the front and the back. That's really all you need. Right now we're doing it with the dust cover closed because your parents are home. And went ahead and just took off the booty band. We're letting the uh, cable hang there. And not obviously doing anything with the sights. Nothing with the muzzle. Magwell is wide open, just like your mom. And stock is fully extended. So we have, or I'm sorry, the pistol race. So that we have that good to go there. Same thing with the trigger. Nothing covering that up. And there's a little bit of oil that we found here. So you just kind of finger wipe that down. Again, mom joke. Um, so everything is good to go there. Um, so what we're going to do is use the highest technology we can find, and that is going to be a hanger. And we're going to kind of remember uh, that scene in Texas Chainsaw, where they hang that chick up by the little hanger thing. We're going to do one of those numbers, and that is going to give us a 360 degree way to spray the gun. And it's going to kind of jiggle there and be weird for a second, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to get right to spraying them. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go to town on it. There's going to be no real rhyme or reason. Um, I'm going to start with the nice Krylon or Rust-Oleum camouflage paint. This is everything that I use is the Rust-Oleum and it is the flat color camo. This essentially is FDE. I know that somebody's going to be out there like, well, actually, Ben, don't you know that the formulation for FDE was discovered when Chris Costa took a shit and no, oh, oh, oh. dude, stop. This is like damn close. 
Don't you see? Uh, it's uh, uh, the lighter and uh, 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 the certain lights and you got the shoe house and uh, the boathouse in here. No. It's close enough for who it's for. It's good enough for government work. So, I have a mostly empty can right now. I'm just going to go ahead and burn through it. The reason why I paint mine on a hook, besides the jokes about Texas Chainsaw, is it lets me get a better 3D coating of it. And it lets me do a better kind of surrounding coating. Uh, so when I get down to using like stripes and things like that, that I'm not making like bands and turning my gun into like an autistic gun raccoon. I really hate when guys will paint like stripes around their gun and they're just concentric. They're actual just rings around it because they didn't notice that their right and left sides were lining up when they did it. And also you'll see like they'll do one side completely like big broad fucking stripes. And then they'll roll over here and they'll be like tiny, thin little skill stripes. Because they've had two different thoughts in their head when they did one side, let it dry, did the other side. That's how the guns are like shit. Not the good kind of shit they're going to do here, but the bad kind of shit. Like they try too hard and they flew too close to the sun and then they just, mm, bad time, bad time. All right, so we're just going to go give it a, a little spritzer here. Forgot one thing. We're doing this live. I'm leaving this in. Even a grandmaster like me could be fallible. I was so concerned whether or not. I could, I didn't, I didn't stop to think whether, whether or not I should. I did not cover the lens of my flashlight. Which is actually a-okay because when I get done here, if there is paint on that light, Thumbnail sketch. Jeff is a thumbnail sketch. That was nice while having it on this hanger. We want to switch sides. That's all I got to do. And since I just moved here and I have all these sweet boxes that I can turn into cardboard targets, there's not a whole lot of room over here right now. Uh, there's just a lot of mess. painting over a V7 Helios muzzle device right now. I want you to fucking know that. It hurts my soul to do this. Destroy Boxy to do it. Right, the last legs of this can here. Oh, wait. The fire selector. Look at that. Oh, Keevan, you do care. You, uh... You pretend to be a hard man, but I mean, secretly, I know, you care. It's the fumes. That's all it is. Such a cool man. So harmless. See this? That's the magazine one right here. I gotta make sure we get the magazine one. Otherwise, you're going to have this black ring around there that looks like shit. People can see it when you have mags out. And they'll laugh at you. And you don't 
to get laughed at. Now do you, sweetheart? Smoking is pretty familiar to me. Because I do a lot of reality on. Sometimes I have to bring the stranger over. It's the next door lady. I don't really know her. She helps me grab the game stuff. Oh, I oh yeah, that's industrial power right there. Fresh paint. point I'm seeing some shadows nothing super egregious though um, I'm not gonna sit there for five hours and play Freddy fuck around with it that's not the point of the way that I paint that's not the point of the way that you should paint either if you're sitting there trying to do detailed brushing with a fucking rattle can doing it wrong so you know like right here, that's really all that needs. Um, I'll probably get here, a little bit of wear on that grip, or make a little bad paint on that grip there. That's all it's going to get. Um, and then, I'll be a gentleman. That's what happens. They'll be like, no, oh, my kid shit his pants. But this is going to hurt a lot of butts. See this right here? This black spot? For you uninitiated people, that's the bulk carrier group. Injection port door. From door, door, door core cover. Internet mad. Now the uh, door is covered from the inside and the out. And they won't uh, have a big black spot there. So that's about it there. Top bottom looks pretty good. Have to find another bolt for the AFG because it was all wonky looking. Um, that I will catch how there's that spot that was missing because that doesn't look like wear. That looks like just the paint was tacky and just came off. Um, so that's fixed right there. For something like that, I will go back and fix where just the paint literally just came off on my hand. Um, that's not the kind of wear that I want on the gun, uh, cause you can clearly see that it was done during the process, not post process. Now what we're going to do is let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll do some details. Now, because I started with this FDE tan, when you do your guns, you're going to start with FDE tan. You have no choice. So if you're like, Oh, but I'm an ODG man, give me a Dapper Dan man too, but you're starting with his bone saw is ready. Okay, so I think we found what we're going to do as far as the overall color scheme is concerned. And what I ended up doing was taking a handguard that I had laying around from my old dissipator project and just kind of sketching out some patterns and some colors that I was going to use and running it on there. So what I did was do a real quick example of what I kind of don't want to do and have rings around the handguard. As you guys can see, that kind of gives it that whole kind of ringtail look. We're not going to do that on the final build. I just want to kind of show you what a lot of guys will do when they lay it sideways. They'll paint it, and they won't realize that they're matching all the stuff up, or they'll try to. And then when you actually have it, you have these concentric rings, as you guys can see. They go all the way around, which they don't sound like they're going to be a big problem when you have it kind of laying down there. But when you have the whole gun put together, you guys can see how it's just kind of tacky looking and just kind of looks shitty. Um, and it looks like you just did it wrong. I don't know how to describe it, but you guys can see there that it just looks really gross and stupid. Um, so what we want to do is not have these things line up. Now it is a little bit weird with the lighting under here. Uh, it looks very pronounced. The colors, the black is very black. Um, uh, but what I'm probably going to do is lay out a little bit of uh, the OD green 
and then go over it with a little bit of black and then spray it down with a little bit of gray to kind of mute the colors and kind of make that the color palette and get a little bit of tan in the background. So always keep some extra stuff around the house, um, parts like that you can use to kind of test out your color choices. That way you don't ruin your expensive gun uh, when you do it for one take. And uh, you guys can say you did it in one take because you have a practice piece. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about when you have these bands around it. It looks kind of crap. Um, guys will put it, you know, they'll lay their gun down and spray it and they'll roll over and spray it again. And they'll think that they're getting continuity by spraying and having the, the patches meet on either side. And in reality, they're just making it look dorky and shitty. You don't want the patches to meet. Um, have you ever seen it where guys will cut shotgun shells? They'll cut um, like buckshot uh, shotgun shells to make cut slugs. Um, where they will make cuts on the bottom of them, but they don't want them to meet. Um, so they can use an improvised slug. Um, they actually do it in the Magpul DVD. Um, where they'll have these two little cuts, but they won't let them meet. Um, if you actually have a copy of that DVD, go ahead and look that up. That's kind of what you want to do with your colors. You want to have them go close to each other, but never actually meet. So you avoid this ringtail shit. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hang this gun back up. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's pretty much coated. As good as I'm going to get it. Um, yeah, there are some, some thin spots and things like that. I don't care. Uh, buffer tube is good. All that good stuff. And again, this will be done prior to uh, the final uh, brace law taking effect. Um, so either way, by the time that the brace rule does come into effect, I will have complied with the ATF in some manner. So that will be taken care of. Uh, as you can see right here, by the handguard, kind of catches to the muzzle device. Um, that is beautiful. Leave that light that is. Um, that shows that you are a G, a baller, and you don't care. Same thing with your bolt, your bolt carrier group. Yeah, bolt functions just fine. So we'll go ahead and hang up, and I will start the spray paint. Okay, guys. So I gave it a quick spray down there, and as you see, the gun is looking nice. And so, as you see, we didn't really care too much about We'll go ahead and lay this in a little better lighting there. There we go. We don't really care too much about, I know it's really hard to see. We'll take a look. There we go. Uh, Stan making those ring tails. We just sprayed wherever we felt like it. We're going to stay concentric with it. Oh, the lighting's not very good here. Um, but we're going to let it go ahead and dry. And then we're going to go ahead and run some black paint on there. Okay, so the paint isn't entirely dry yet, but fuck the critics, everything I make is a hit. So we're going to go back through here and go over some of the, um, the OD green spots with a little bit of black. Now, um, it's important that we go ahead and we don't run this too close to the actual surface. So we want to come from back here and kind of give it a little Catalina wine mixer spritzer. Uh, because we don't want the black to overpower it. We don't want a real strong tiger stripe line going through there. As you guys can see on the camera there, it picks up pretty well there. Um, we don't want like a Vietnam era jungle tiger stripe going through there. We want kind of an accent mark to kind of pick up that OD green and kind of make it snap a little bit. Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. And put a little bit of pop in that.
actually. Okay, so we have here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, so we'll go ahead and show this in the full moonlight. But the lighting sucks down here. Um, and you're not going to be able to get the full effect on the Benzy box. Um, but what this is doing is it's kind of giving it a burnt camo effect and just kind of giving it like a deepening shadow effect to the OD green. So it's giving it more depth and more kind of substance. And there's a couple of dark spots you can kind of see here by the base. That's not hard. But um, um, by the base of the light here. Where you're getting a good kind of burnt effect there, and it's giving a good shadow effect in certain areas. And again, I know the lighting blows down here, but we will get a good, good, good light for you up on top there on the object there. Real nice shadow effect sitting in the back of that stock, uh, stock tube. Oh, yeah, it's real fucking neat over it. Okay, so. One last thing, and paint's still drying, but I'm a savage, so you wanted it, you got it. Guys, I did lie to you earlier. I did do that. I said I don't use primer. I lied. Because this is primer. It's just gray spray paint. I needed a gray. Gray was on sale. It was primer. Excuse me. So... This is the secret sauce. This is the spice. Uh, this is going to bring everything together like a zipper. And it's going to dull everything down a little bit. It's going to bring all the colors, kind of mush them together, meld them a little bit, bring everything together. Perfect harmony. All the pronouns, everything just in perfect peace and, and, and harmony and everyone's happy and lovey. Uh, and it's going to just melt things down. It's going to look awesome. So what I'm going to do is give the rifle a light spritzer, a little wine spritzer there. And it's going to just... Mm, you guys wait till you see it. You'll love it. So we're just going to not lay it on thick. Nice and light. Yeah. Works. We're on fumes, boys, so I have to do this nice. And again, you guys are watching this in real time. This paint is not dry. Save and hang for a second. I'm gonna bring this thing up to some better lighting. Show you guys what we got going on. I think you're gonna love the results. But I've been wrong before. But I don't think I am this time. Okay, and there we have it. Sponge Boy Me Bob. All nice and complete. So you guys can see there. It's got a real nice tone to it. The camel colors blend very, very nicely. There's no sharp kind of hard edges to it um, there's no very hard to find areas where the colors start and stop they blend very very nicely you guys can see the close there's actually some nice speckling um, there you go can I get some good zoom into that and so what that does is it really blends your colors And so that instead of having like a really hard edge um, start and stop to your colors where you have very, very defined stripes or blotches or whatever, you have this overall kind of modeled effect. And um, so you're able to get really, really good definition on your colors and make it look very natural and worn without having to resort to something like a pattern. Like if we go to the magazine here where I use like a, like a bag of oranges to go ahead and create that textured pattern there. Um, when you look at it very closely, you guys can obviously see that there is a very clearly and sharply defined pattern that your eyes will pick up. Where on something like this, it's just very, very modeled. 
uh, which looks really, really nice, uh, especially from a little bit further away. Um, looks really, really good. Um, it looks very, very natural. There's nothing that really your eyes pick up and see as a very unnatural tone. And you can see we didn't get any of that weird ring tailing or anything else like that. Yep, Poverty Pony Lower Boy. Look at that. That's right. That upper though. V7. 300 Blackout Boy. 6.5. Yeah, six and a half inches. Mmm. Yeah, 30 cal. Sexy, sexy. Anyways, that's all I got for you there. That's the paint job. That's how I did it. That's how you should do it. Stop watching these other losers, how they paint their stupid rifles. You should do it my way. And again, guys, like every other firearm and piece of equipment that is maintained by this channel or people that run this channel, everything is maintained and used according to current and updated firearms laws that are made with state, local, and federal jurisdictions. So, good on you there. That's all I got for you today, guys. See ya. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.